Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, a uh, certified astrologer. Um, and in this uh, next installment of Vedic Astrology, I'll be talking about understanding uh, the perspective of the ancient seers that um, were actually uh, behind uh, Jyotisha, and, uh, which is astrology, and, and uh, created this uh, incredible discipline. So I'm um, thinking about uh, the language that all of these um, come from. Uh, this is uh, ancient language known as Sanskrit. And uh, I've gone through um, ancient texts uh, with this language. Um, however, it's not a spoken language any longer uh, in India. Um, so understanding some of the um, pronunciations uh, actually takes some uh, practice. Um, I grew up with the pronunciations. However, when you're coming into it um, as a novice, um, it takes time. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to um, present to you um, the, um, the the houses um, and, and the signs, actually. I'll be presenting to you the signs, and then I'll present to you the Sanskrit equivalent of the sign, and uh, this is the language that's used in India more so, um, of, of Jyotisha, or astrology. So the first one is, um, if, when you think about um, the fiery sign Aries, um, uh, and it's represented by a ram, and um, that's why it's called uh, Mesha. Um, the second one, of course, is Taurus, and Taurus is represented by a bull, and so um, the bull is uh, known as Risha. And then uh, uh, Gemini. Gemini is an interesting uh, sign here. Um, uh, even though I am a Taurus ascendant in sidereal Vedic astrology, in Western astro astrology, I'm uh, Gemini ascendant. So Gemini in Sanskrit is uh, Maithuna or uh, Mithuna, and um, actually that is the ultimate union between male and female. So the symbolism in uh, in Vedic astrology strays away from the symbolism that is associated with Gemini, um, Castor and Pollux, um, the twins. And so um, there's different stories for the same uh, sign. Um, so thinking about the next sign, uh, Cancer is uh, Karka, uh, and then uh, Leo is um, Simha, and uh, Simha is actually um, uh, associated with um, uh, multiple god gods and goddesses in India, um, the lion. Um, so the next one is Virgo or um, Kanya. Uh, and then uh, Libra is Thula, and of course the balancing uh, uh, the, the balance between uh, different sides, that's Libra, and that um, particular thing is known as Dula. And then uh, Virgo is uh, Vrishchik or Vrishchika, and then uh, Sagittarius is Dhanu, and Dhanu literally means uh, uh, arrow, um, uh, and, um, and bow and arrow. Um, and if you think about the weapon that uh, Sagittarius holds um, the centaur. Um, it's actually um, a, a bow and arrow. Uh, th thinking about Capricorn, um, that's uh, Makar or uh, Makara, and then um, uh, Aquarius is uh, Kumb or Kumbha, and then uh, Pisces is uh, Mean. So th that is uh, representative of all of the. 12 signs that are in the zodiac. Now, a note that I want to make, and I'll do this uh, when I'm explaining nakshatras, is that there are 27 nakshatras, and that represents uh, each day that the uh, moon is um, within each lunar mansion. Uh, I've explained nakshatra in um, other podcasts, and uh, it's beyond the scope um, of this talk. So, um, but what I wanted, the point that I wanted to make uh, is that um, due to the stars being used uh, and Orion and, and other constellations, um, there is more specifics that are outlined in Vedic astrology than what is present in Western astrology. So these comparisons are good to keep in mind. 
and think about when you're um, thinking about uh, Vedic astrology and, and the basics of Vedic astrology. I hope this has provided you with some information. Thank you for listening.